So it's finally time to take a look at the 6600K. This is Intel's latest gen CPU and we're also going to compare it to the 5820K and the 4670K. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Tech S City. This is Brian coming to you guys today with a review of the 6600K. Now, we're gonna get straight on into the benchmarks and then we're gonna talk about this CPU and how it compares to the other next best competitors. So as you can see from the benchmarks there, Skylake only performed about 5 to 7.5% better than the 4670K. And the best case scenario was the Cinebench score there, the R15 benchmark, which showed 750 points versus 697 points. Now you're probably wondering, why am I only getting a 7.5% increase at best compared to other tech sites that are showing even up to 12% increases? Well, that's because with Haswell, you have to set the case ratio below the core clock. If you set it at the same speed as the core clock or above, you get a detriment or a hit to performance. And I've tested this in the past and sometimes it can make a 6% difference. That's right, without even changing the core clock at all. So when we're comparing an apples to apples 4670K at 4.6 gigahertz versus a 6600K at 4.6 gigahertz, we end up with speeds that aren't that impressive to be honest, especially for a CPU that's been released two years later. Now what about power consumption and heat? Well, I will say that Skylake seems to run a bit cooler, even though I do have a new cooler on here, so I'm not gonna really be comparing temperatures. And also one thing I will say about Skylake is that they've got it right at least with the thermal paste on the die this time. I had to actually delid my 4670K to get it up to a stable 4.6 gigahertz. This on the other hand does not need that. The one thing I will point out is though this chip on average needs more voltage than a Haswell will need to get to the same core speeds, which was interesting. I got this to 4.6 gigahertz at 1.28 volt. This on the other hand needed 1.35 volt, which is interesting since we're stepping down to 14 nanometer. So things are kind of a little bit interesting with this chip, though I will say one thing, and that is that the power consumption was roughly the same though. When I did the Prime 95 benchmark there with the maximum heat or power output, this scored around about 264 watts and this scored around about 260 watts. So power consumption really doesn't differ that much between these two CPUs. And on idle, the 6600K rig I had was using a little bit more though. Keep in mind though, I am running a lot more fans this time and I am running an all-in-one water cooler, which will use up a bit more power on idle than when I had this rig, which only had a single cooler and a single fan installed. So at the end of the day, can I recommend the 6600K? And then the answer to this is yes and no. The yes being for those people who need the single core performance. We're talking diehard Armour 3 fans or people who just love the fastest boot speeds possible. And then there comes the no recommendation. This is a little bit tricky because I'm going off the top of my head here, but when this was first released, I remember paying around about 220 USD adjusted for this, as opposed to the 6600K, which cost me around about 260 USD adjusted. So we can see there we've got a $40 increase and we only have a 7.5% increase after two years. So keep in mind though, this is a no trink and an architectural improvement. So I'm really not that impressed with the 6600K, especially when you look at what other options out there. We have the 1231V3, which is the Xeon Haswell. It's got eight threads. 
it costs less than the 6600K and you don't have to go out and buy a CPU cooler, you don't have to go out and buy an overclockable motherboard and you're gonna be using less power. So for people on single graphics cards, that makes more sense at the moment. And then you have the 5820K for the people who wanna step it up to productivity. This thing just absolutely poops all over the 6600K and the 4670K when it comes to productivity and it only costs $100 more. Keep in mind though the motherboards are a little bit more expensive, but you're going to get much more productivity out of the 5820K as opposed to the 6600K. So before we move on to the final score, I will say that I did not test the iGPU on this because it doesn't really weigh in on this review, considering Broadwell's out there at the moment, which has a much better iGPU on board. And also if you're going for price performance, you might want to check out AMD's APUs as well. So this leaves me with a final score of three and a half stars out of five. I did take a whole star off just because the performance wasn't that impressive. Not to mention I had to give it more volts than my Haswell CPU to get to 4.6 gigahertz. And the power consumption really didn't differ at all between these two CPUs. And this is two years in the making. So I'm really not impressed in that aspect. I also took off another half a star for the value for money since this CPU in relative terms is more expensive when the 4670K was first released. So weighing up those two things, it leads me to the three and a half stars out of five. Now, the person who would benefit from this, as I said earlier, is the person looking for the best IPC on the market, as well as the motherboards as well. They've got all the latest USB 3.1 on there, good onboard audio, good NICs and whatnot. And you will have fun overclocking this. And for me, when I first got on it, I did have a bit of fun. But now after I'm actually critically analyzing this CPU for what it is, it brings me to this score. So anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this review of the 6600K. If you have any questions or comments about this Skylake 6600K, then leave a comment in the comment section below. Also the i7 6700K, I didn't bother picking that up as it was around about $150 more than the i5 variant. And for that price, you could go pick yourself up a 5820K, which again will knock it out of the water for productivity. So anyway guys, if you like this video, please give it a fat like and I will catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.